Now, this one is a cartoon. And I'm not sure who's sent it in. Anyway, so let's just have a look at the picture. Right, it says in the cartoon, the boy's name is Jeremy, the woman is his mother. In the first frame, doesn't have a phone, second frame, comes into his room, has no idea why she's there. Haven't you done that before? Don't you walk across the kitchen and you say, what was I doing? So you go back and you did what you were doing before. Ah, oh, yeah, now I remember. So that doesn't know why she's coming to his room. She starts a sentence in the third frame. Can't remember what she was going to say. Asks him about her glasses. Gets her glasses because he's found them for her. And then suddenly, in the last frame, she comes out with that. And Jeremy says, that she remembers. Okay, so let's have a look at our questions. The first question asks you to look at frame one. And they're very kind. They make sure that they identify the frame for you. Please won't you be careful. Home language students, FAL students. I cannot tell you how often students look at the wrong frame and they even tell you which the frames are so that they're trying to make sure that you don't make a mistake. Please guys, look very carefully. Have a highlighter with you. And when the question says frame one, highlight frame one in pink or whatever, I'm using blue, and go to frame one and highlight it so that you are looking at the right frame. I know that sounds like a oh, duh, but people get nervous in exams. Their brains go to mush. Right. So frame one, we're looking at frame one. Describe her body language. So... You can't just say her arms seem to show that she doesn't know what's happening. You need to say her right arm, let me put this pen down, her right arm is raised. So you describe it and her hand is sort of against her head and her left arm is on her hip and she's going, what am I up to here? So you need to describe it. Okay, so... And this is for home language and FAL. Please don't just say she looks as if she doesn't understand or she looks confused or she looks as if she doesn't know what's happening. You need to describe the body language. They want that. Okay. And I would even ex accept, you know, the head turned sideways to suggest that she's kind of looking around. Gosh, what am I doing here? All right. The second question asks about Jeremy in frame Two. So once again, go to the right frame. And it says, what's he doing? Now he's doing something different in each frame. Get the wrong frame, you're going to get the wrong answer. So what's he doing? So he's lying on his bed. He seems to be reading a book. He's got his feet up like that over his head. Easy peasy. Now, they then ask about frames one through to five. So all of this, and they ask you about the woman's state of mind. All right, so you look at how she looks with those big eyes, those hands up to her mouth all the time, and her did I, where did I put my phone, all those questions. So what does she seem to be? Very forgetful. Right, I don't know if you can see that F-U-L there. So, forgetful. Now, FAL students, they often give you words to choose from, which they did in this exam. 
home language students, you've got to provide your own word. So it's quite a good idea to look at the kinds of words that are set up in an FAL paper to give you ideas on the kind of words you should know. So here they also gave decisive. So decisive, somebody who is able to decide and knows what they want and decides about it. Attentive, paying attention to something. Careful, taking care that you're doing something correctly. So it's quite obvious that that's the right answer because she's clearly forgetful. Sometimes students don't know the meanings of words and they therefore battle to choose in the multiple choice question. And home language students, your problem is that you often can't get the right word to describe it. You go, oh, I know what it is, but I can't quite write, remember the word. So you need to practice your vocabulary also. All right, what about our next question? Look at Jeremy throughout the cartoon. Why is he so quiet? It says, suggest two reasons. Now, this is an example of when your thinking counts. So, if you say things like, well, he, does, he might not know where his mother's put her phone, so he doesn't know the answer. Or he's silent because he's found her glasses and he simply hands them to her. He doesn't have to say, here you are. When she comes into his room and says, why am I here? How's he meant to know why she's there? So say something like, most of the time he doesn't have an answer to her questions. And that when she asks things like the glasses, he's silent because he just gives them to her. So just think, look at the cartoon, look at when he's silent. Why did I come in here? I forgot what I was going to say. Well, what's he meant to say to her? I'll sit and wait until you remember. Okay. Then we're told to go to frame five. So go to frame five. And we're asked to look at frame four. And the question is, explain how her action is different in those two frames. And you've got to look at just those two frames and the visual aspect only. So how is her action different? If you are home language or foul, when you get a contrast question, you must say in frame four, buddy, 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 in frame five, buddy, 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 buddy. So in frame four, her action, she's simply standing there because she doesn't know where her glasses are. And in frame five, she's putting them on her face because she's found them. Home language, the kinds of contrast you get is things like a state of mind that's changed or a reason for action. So you might say she's sort of leaning over him because she doesn't know what to do. And then in the next frame, she knows what to do. She's been given her glasses and she can put them on. So you get asked a little bit more explanation, but you both get asked contrast. So you need to look at this frame and say, in this frame, this, in this frame, that. Please, that is your answering technique. And if you do that, you get your marks. And then the last question is about humor. And you're asked, does the cartoonist succeed in creating humor in frame six? Now, be very careful about saying, no, I don't find it funny. Some students even write things like, I don't understand this cartoon. So I don't know if it's funny or not. Try to think about humor as not being kind of laughing, ha, 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 kind of humor. And I've said to you before, look for irony. You know the examiners love irony. So what's the irony? 
that when his mother is thinking about things that don't affect him, she can't remember anything. But the minute it's about the money, the change, he took $20 out of her purse. It was two weeks ago to buy milk on your way home from Sarah's house. Gosh, that she remembers. So the irony is his mother is so forgetful until it comes to the moment when she remembers exactly how much money he owes her, when he borrowed it, where he was coming from, what day it was. Wow! Does she remember absolutely clearly? So the humor arises from a contrast. You could use contrast. In the mother's forgetfulness, you could use this. In the rest of the cartoon, and how clearly she remembers at the end. It is the clarity of her memory that makes it amusing. Not fall about funny, not laugh out loud funny, not roll around the floor funny, just amusing. The problem with parents. So you could say the cartoon is amusing because it, it puts its finger on one of the ordinary things about life, that your parents are impossible. They're just so irritating. They forget what they shouldn't forget, and they remember what you really were hoping they were going to forget. Remember cartoon strips generally deal with ordinary people's lives and try to point out these little amusing quirks, ironies, contrasts, irritating, annoying things about the world in which we live and ask us to laugh perhaps a little bitterly or a little wryly or a little, oh gosh, yes. It's meant to go, ah, yeah, yeah, I've had that happen to me. Ah, I understand this. That's the point of a cartoon strip, to highlight something that ordinary everyday life involves. 